Hello, welcome back to the debate. We are going to be talking about Riyad Mahrez, who's missed training for the fourth time. They all had yesterday off training, but Riyad Mahrez uh, still not available uh, for Leicester City. Do you think that he's handling the situation post the Manchester City deal falling through well or correctly? Well, you know, like, like I said uh, earlier on, I think it's, it's very unprofessional the way it's, it's, it's all... He's dealing with it. It's, it's, it's blatantly obvious for everyone to see. You know, you can't just down tools um, because you don't get what you want. And to a certain extent, you know, Manchester City, people can say whatever they want, but it's Manchester City, <laughs> whether Sane's injured or this or that, they saw a player that they wanted to go for. It was that late in the, in the, in the window. And, of course, people say, are oh, they out of order? Why didn't they go for him at the start of the window? They didn't want him at the start of the window, maybe. They didn't want him at the end of the window. Now, the fact is, is that it has disrupted everything for him and it's because we know that he wants to leave Leicester. Um, so this is why I cannot understand that when he was signing that deal, what he signed in 2016, yeah. he, he didn't have uh, clauses and, and, and stipulations in it that's going to help him to move at this point. You know, I, I, I still can't understand why Leicester, who, who bought him for 400000 wouldn't want to cash in on that asset who does not now want to play for the club. In which case, can you understand Mahrez's frustration if Manchester City come in and the figures that were, were being talked about were a £65 million bid and, and Leicester wanting £90-95 million for him? Yeah. But can you understand in that situation that when you've, you've been brought into the club for £400,000 that you would be frustrated. It feels as though the club are, are being obstructive, perhaps. Yeah, from, from his perspective, you understand. As players, mm -hmm. you yeah. want to play. You see a team like Guardiola's team playing the football. Any player would want to be a part of that. But at the same time, when you, when you sign a contract and the money that he'd been offered at Leicester to stay there would have been... very rarely do players honour their contracts. And, and yeah. that's, that's when across... You sign, across when you sign a contract, if you don't have a clause in your contract or anything, you're contracted to a football club to, to do your job. And, and I think it's a shame because two years ago we saw a Leicester team take this league by storm and he was right at the centre of that, yeah. you know, he was outstanding. And when you look back, and I look at, back at these two guys next to me careers, you look back at your legacy and his legacy now is tarnished because for all the good work he's done for the football club, this won't be forgotten and, and the way that he's dealt with it. And that's a real shame. And, and I think that come the end of the season, he, he won't be at the club. Um, in the meantime, it's up to him whether he wants to help the football club be where they want to be, or whether he wants to sit out the rest of the season, which would be a shame for Leicester, it would be a shame for the Premier League because he's such a gifted footballer and he's someone that you, you want to see play every week. Is that why Leicester are, are so keen to keep him, that they, they want such a huge amount of money to part with him? Well, you have to realise about these owners, you know, he's given them a really good contract uh, along a couple of years ago and he's looking at this and you don't mess about with people that have an awful lot of money because uh, they're in charge and... If the owner decides to, to keep him and the money is not the, the object of it, it's principle. You know, sometimes you have to be careful who you're messing about with here as a player um, because it can actually backfire. I think, yes, I understand his frustration that he wants to go. Mm. I think uh, Man City haven't matched what uh, Leicester's price is, which is, is entirely up to Leicester. I think, as rightly touched on, there should have been maybe a, a clause in it at some stage. Who says that in the, their, their, if they'd have put a clause in, then you'd have been on less money? Or you put a clause in, you, you don't put a clause in, you take that amount of money. Yeah. Who knows? There's many, many things that could have gone into that contract that they decided not to. And you chose to sign the contract. Yes, you're not happy about what's going on. And I'm sure in time, he will end up leaving. Um, but at the moment, but he's letting himself down. He's letting his teammates down. And he's letting the club down at this present time. He needs to get himself back. It's gone past, get on with it and wait till the summer. I can't see how the, the situation gets retrieved now. Um, simply because he, he looks like... I, I don't know what frame of mind he is now going to be in. It happened so late yeah. in the window. And that's why some people are saying that Man City have got to... Man City have seen a player that they identified with. And people are saying, yeah, but if he went to Man City, he wouldn't have played. That's not the point for uh, Riyad Mahrez. Riyad Mahrez wanted to go to a club, like Liam said, who are going places under a manager who's, who's doing great things. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he may have had a part to play in that. Might play. I don't think he would play regularly, but I think that he would come and he'd have a part to play. Whether he can go there, Dennis, yeah. and then try and keep something, a Sane or a, or a Sterling out, is maybe what he wants to try and test himself with. Mm. So these are the things that, for me, him and his agent, when they were signing that deal, they should say, you know, we, we, we know we want to leave. 
So we need to put some stuff yeah. in here, put a clause in. Because then they're now looking out for him and his career, so as he then gets his big move. They haven't yeah. done that because they offered him a lot of money, he signed it, and now he's put himself in a situation where the club can do exactly what they're doing now. I understand Leicester's point of view, and I yeah. understand his point of you view. See, you see, what you touched on there regarding Sane and Jesus, uh, two of them got injured. Mm. So then Man City maybe then decided, right, we do need him now. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe they may have waited to the summer, but I think circumstances change at yeah. football clubs where certain individuals get injured. You think, you know what, I'm going into this situation now. I want him for this uh, competition. This, I want him for this yeah. competition. Mm -hmm. so therefore, now we will get him because the others are out. Maybe that's why Man City done it, and maybe they would have waited otherwise at the end of the season. Yeah, that's football, though. You, that is, you, yeah. you can't. It's a, such a short term game. Yeah. Things happen, injuries happen, and that's why I'm astounded that Mahrez's agent didn't put a clause in his contract. You know, he's been outstanding for the Probably. last two, three years, and I can understand it. It may have been, it may just have been that Manchester City didn't, didn't match it. It's exactly. possible. It's, that's possible as well, yeah. but that, that again comes down to you know, negotiations between clubs, between agents. At the moment, he's got three, four months left of the season. Maximise that. Go and play, and and make sure that you leave Leicester in, because 20 in 20 years' time, people will still talk about the time they won the league, and his name is now tarnished as a player who's refusing to go and train, refusing to go and play. And when he looks back on this situation in a few years' time, I think he'll be disappointed. I, I don't think that two years ago, when he was signing that deal, we know that the, the transfer. Transfer fees have gone through the roof. I don't think two years ago they're going to put the kind of price tag on him 100%. where it, he's going to say, yeah, I'm happy with that, and then I'll sign the deal. They just haven't done it. Mm. And the people who are looking out for him have not looked out for him in respects of his next move um, as, as a footballer, yeah. going to yeah. a level that he wants to try and see if he can play at and, and sustain and, and, and win. Go to the Champions League, obviously, he wants to go to there. And I believe that somewhere along the line, his representatives um, have has let him down, for me, personally. They have. For all the, the clubs that he's been linked with, the, there was a, a, a strong uh, interest from Roma. Yeah. The interest in, in Manchester City, we believe, was, was genuine, even if they weren't prepared to meet Leicester's valuation for him. He's also been linked with, with other clubs mm. since 2016, on and off, over various transfer windows. Mm -hmm. Is it starting to damage his reputation in terms of having clubs who are interested, but not quite well, enough? I don't think this situation, how he's, how he's conducting himself at the moment, is going gonna, is gonna, to um, have people banging his door yeah, down, ingratiating themselves to people, they? simply because it's, it's not the kind of player you want to bring into a harmonious dressing room who can literally like flick a switch and turn into Dr. Jack or Mr. Hyde, you know, in <laughs> respects of his personality. He, he, that is not what you want in your dressing room. I don't think that it, how he's acting now is going to help him if there are potential buyers for him or people who's going to say, I'll take him in the summer. You know, suppose he's not playing, then what's going to happen?